Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Greetings, everybody. As you know from the title, I'm going to be talking about Star Trek The Next Generation. I've been on a little bit of a Star Trek kick. I was playing the game. I've always been into Star Trek. I guess I'm a Trekkie. Always will be. And I've been doing a couple of these at a time. So this is real close to my other one, which is the original series. And like the original, each one captured a special place in my heart. Although by the time this is out, in 1987, I am 16. I'm working already. There's a love for this and a surpassing of the original and rightly deserved. You might have actors you're not familiar with. Uh, Patrick Stewart, probably, you know, you know, just went on to do some amazing stuff. Jonathan Franks, probably not. Laval Burton, probably. Uh, Gates McFadden, Marina Sirtis, Brent Spiner, Will Wheaton, perhaps. In any case, it carried the legacy on from the original series. And unlike the other shows, it had a rocky beginning, in my opinion. I was so excited about this. I remember gearing up, just being so excited to catch a new Star Trek. Because at the time, the movies had done incredibly well. So for 20 years or so, Star Trek has maintained its fan base, its cult following. Its themes have carried over and the movies were done well. I love most of the movies with the original cast from the original series. And because of, you know, there were behind the scenes stuff. I'm sure people do deep dives on these things. I do mostly surface thoughts unless I get engaged and get into a more deeper conversation. But there's a piercing of the torch that is done so well here. Uh, done by DeForest Kelly, who played Bones throughout the series. Lady Nimoy would be an influence. And even Kirk meets Picard in Generations, the movie. But the next generation, the first season is a little weird. It's finding its footing, the ship, everything's a little different. And you're getting used to a new bridge, the color scheme, the computers. Such a departure from the original. They didn't try to keep the button clicks and the punch in type buttons they want with this new thing and if you get really deep into it which i have i play the role playing system i have numerous books and manuals on the ships and the technology all that type of stuff i've read the novels the comic books play the video games basically you do it all with star trek there's a a charm to it in its own, the way it's explained, uh, the lore of it, the history. You go and you can connect the years leading into the new show. The Next Generation by Season 3 is amazingly done, running full steam right to the end. So many people are watching the show. It's won new fans and given pride to a generation who, like me, always We'll have a fondness for the original series as campy and as crazy it got. The Next Generation dabbled in that, but it hit levels that were not seen before, but kept the heart of the original Star Trek of Gene Roddenberry was there from the beginning to the end. The interactions with the crew were different, but just as enjoyable. You had a captain who was staunch and a little uh, curmudgeon and he has to learn to become softer and more of a team. By the end, at the last episode, I think, of the series on TV is when he finally goes to one of the poker games or something to that effect. The interactions are special. The themes expanded on the original, did it in new ways. You have a synthetic being or... I don't know what the proper term is these days in Star Trek with the release of Star Trek Picard and... I don't know, they fucked everything up in a certain way. As nice as it looks, it's just maybe not to my liking. Or to you know, it doesn't suit me very well. But the next generation did so many things well. It 
never misses a beat for most parts even episodes that aren't connected because star trek was always you know you had a different episode different scenarios and uh tech problems and all these things and uh societal things and time and entities and it just expanded on it in amazing ways you've got things like q the Borg, all done written well it gives legitimacy to the old series the vision of gene roddenberry how times change and by the time this show is ending they spawn a new series when it spins off of I don't think the last season of Star Trek. I think like the year before it ended, so six season or so. They spin off Deep Space Nine. They do a crossover. I love Deep Space Nine. It might be one of my favorite, and even Voyager, which I love. They've all touched back to the next generation in some way. That line of ships, the line of the technology, the themes, the uniforms for the most part kept in line with each other, built off each other. And although, for me, Deep Space Nine and Voyager have a better beginning and maintain their momentum at a high level, they owe it to the next generation. Because the next generation was that good. It broke new ground in ways that the other shows don't and have could never do in certain ways. And just like the original, for me, did. There's a love you find for the characters, even the ones when you find out later are assholes on the set and aren't so nice, they don't bring the professional, blah, 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 blah. The sign of a good show, good casting, actors, directors, whatever it is, is the product on the screen on this TV set shows no indication of that. Or if it does, it's used properly, it's channeled for the proper times and the proper situations. So the show wins on so many levels. The Next Generation handles the acting, the chemistry well. Its uh, visuals are stunning. At the time, yes, they could be picked apart. And even The Next Generation went into the movies and had about, I think, I don't know, five movies. I liked them too. But the show, the heart of the show, coming out, 1987, like I said, 16 years old, growing up with the show, having a fondness for it and losing that anxiety or that fear that it was just going to be a remake of the first one. It was going to uh, not be as visually stunning. And it surpassed it. And like I said before, rightly so. As much as I love the original series, The Next Generation will always probably stay at the top. Uh, I might personally like watching... Um, Voyager or Deep Space Nine more often for repeatability but there's nothing like the first season or the first uh, Passing of the Torch which is the next generation I recommend it highly to everybody fun smart yeah it can get a little bit of techno babble in there or some of the themes as corny as the original Star Trek perhaps to some people I could see it and the conventions really pick up with this show, although the old cast members have probably always done well. The legacy of The Next Generation has just built upon the foundations and strengthened it for all series to come. Even Star Trek Enterprise with Scott Bakula, which is one of the only of those series that didn't last seven seasons. It went only four. But I think it was great. I think for what it did four seasons, it was fine. And it was trying to bridge the gap between the movie look and the old look. I think it did it well, although the uniforms could have been better. The next generation just will always be a foundation that is looked upon with fondness and greatness. Whether it wins so many awards or it has uh, high viewings, it cements this cult phenomenon, this this theme and hope for the future civilizations in some way, if it's space exploration or getting over our own societal problems, I think it's a good vision to have. And to pick it up, Gene Roddenberry involved, of course, and he probably involved as much as he could to the day he died. Uh, so 
much appreciation to Gene Roddenberry and all of these, and even the people who worked together, the production, uh, like I always say, casting, this is remarkable. When you find out later that Will Wheaton and he admits to it being in a certain way, his character had a charm and his leaving on the show was a little weird and kind of makes sense now. I think they should have brought him back for movies and stuff. The potential of his character leaving and the reason why he left was something that I think they could have really played on. Even if the actor's a dick, maybe he's over it now. Well, he seems to be a nice guy, and I like watching him play D&D on... uh, I don't know what the fuck it's called. Um, uh, some own convention thing. They do their own podcast. It's pretty interesting. But the actors behind the scenes, the turmoil, whatever's going on, doesn't show. We've got some great performances. I had a crush on the uh, women on the show, like um, Deanna Troy, which is Marina Sirtis, which is like the counselor. And even the doctor, Gates McFadden, um, just wh- everything worked. It just worked on a lot of levels. And like I said, in the beginning, it might be a little choppy, if you want to call it like, um, for me, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where you're watching the first season going, you know, what are they attempting? What's the feel? Arrow was the same way. Once you got over, okay, you know, bullets aren't going to really bounce, you know, hit this guy that much, and he's shooting arrows. For the most part, I enjoyed the beginning of Arrow, and I'll probably do a podcast on that, but Star Trek The Next Generation might have been shaky or built up and created the foundation that all Star Trek will benefit from, movies also. Just like the original cast went on to do the movies, for 20 years it was still in the populace, it was still something that people liked, built upon. Next Generation could have destroyed the series, in my opinion. It could have really put a damper on things. The cast weren't going to be going for that much longer. Are they going to pass the torch, the baton on to the next? And it worked well, incredibly well, in my opinion. I totally recommend Star Trek The Next Generation. However you watch it, Netflix, uh, streaming services, if you like got the DVDs, it was at the time, that's one of the only gripes I had with Star Trek, the only gripe I've ever had. I love, and at one time when I was doing well and things were doing going better, I would buy every DVD, no matter if I watched it on the streaming, or just anything, I'd just buy it. Buffy, all the seasons, uh, X-Files, anything, Fringe, anything to get my hands on that I loved, Night Stalker, never bought Star Trek seasons on DVD. They were always double the fucking price, maybe more than everything else. I kind of understood it, I guess. You got all this production value, all this special effects, and crammed into these, I guess, digital files that they're creating. Whatever the process was, I kind of understood it, but just said, look, my love for Star Trek knows no bounds, but I don't feel like paying that much for these fucking episodes, so... I remember at the time it was like a joke thing because I would come home with seasons of everything and I would just I love Star Trek, but I wouldn't. And I bought all the movie DVDs, every one of them, and they have great behind the scenes stuff, even the original cast ones, or even in Next Generation. The legacy of the Next Generation is what is built on and continues its momentum because I don't think the new movies captured it well well enough and i don't think the new tv shows are capturing it well enough for me and it might be just me getting older approaching 50 people change and i think maybe there's a understanding that it will be you know it's not for me the new stuff to that to some extent try to look at it rationally and neutrally i just don't see them building and adding to what the next generation did whether d space nine voyager um any of the stuff connected to it i mean even the original series had a cartoon you got comic books and everything else enterprise might have weakened it a little bit i like it i like it a lot but i think it not making it seven season and kind of not 
keeping that theme. It didn't, it was a departure from Voyager and Deep Space Nine and Next Generation, which were almost seamless. Enterprise with Scott Bakula goes to the beginning before the Enterprise is, I guess, created. And it's the first space exploration type story. And I like it. I like it a lot. It just doesn't fit in and feel like it's part of it. However, because it's built so well, you got the original series and Next Generation, all these branches and the, what they built have a place. For me, even Star Trek Discovery has a place, and it's not looked upon badly, although Picard started getting to me. You can listen to my podcast on those. The movies, I take for what they are, but The Next Generation will always be, I think, the crowning achievement for now. As much as my favorability with other series might overshadow it in watching it again and again, I respect what it did, what they all did, everybody involved. Star Trek The Next Generation is a must-watch, in my opinion. Go watch it now. I'll talk to everybody next time. Be well.